Hi, uh, welcome back again. Thank you for waiting. Let's begin uh, our session. Uh, we are going to see what's new in SolidCam 2022, and this time a focus is going to be on the features in three axis and five axis milling. There are uh, several new things and some very, uh, uh, very nice improvements that we have done in our three axis and and five axis uh, strategies. We've got something new inside uh, SolidCam five axis, uh, some very exciting stuff. And also we have done some very uh, amazing improvements in our existing three axis strategies. So let's go ahead with our uh, three axis uh, stuff. <clears throat> uh, the first major improvement that we see in 2022 of SolidCam is the calculation time of uh, Turbo HSR and Turbo HSM. Uh, of course, Turbo HSM was very fast. Uh, there has been some improvement again in Turbo HSM, but the major improvement comes up here in, uh, in Turbo HSR. You can see that uh, the part that is there on, on your screen uh, was calculated on SolidCam 2021 as well as SolidCam 2022 on the same system with the same configuration, only the change here was the version. And the roughing in 2021 took 20 seconds while the roughing in 2022 took only 10 seconds. Uh, the rest roughing took uh, 66 seconds in uh, 2021. The rest roughing in 2022 takes only about 16 seconds. Uh, the third rest roughing is about 40 seconds and the third rest roughing in 2022 is approximately about 15 seconds. So we are seeing about three to four times faster calculation using SolidCam 2022. I'm going to show you also on the file how quick the calculations are. In fact, I think the recalculation like is about a few seconds, two or three seconds, it'll recalculate back. So wherever uh, Turbo HSR uh, strategy is or the engine is used, uh, the change is reflected also in uh, those strategies. For example, in rotary machining, the same turbo HSR strategy is used for roughing in, in rotary. So uh, the speed of calculation of roughing in rotary also has gone up by approximately four times. So what took, let's say, about uh, two to two and a half minutes earlier in 2021 now takes about 30 to 40 seconds in 2022. So that there has been a dramatic difference, and this has been uh, thanks to some changes in the internal algorithm, optimizing certain things uh, of the algorithm and so on. And that has made it possible for us to uh, make this uh, change, uh, which greatly affects uh, the calculation time, uh, both in Turbo HSR as well as in rotary roughing. Uh, Another very important thing that we are we have done, in fact, I think uh, this has been going on for uh, quite some time, and I think we are in a position that uh, with this release, we are going to release it, is the arc fit. Uh, the turbo roughing and finishing now have the option to fit arcs, and this feature greatly reduces the uh, program size by over 50 to 60%. You can see the dramatic difference in the lines, the number of lines for the same part, uh, in 2021 without arc fit and in 2022 with arc fit. For example, the roughing was uh, in 2021 without arc fit was 785,970 uh, lines, whereas in arc fit it is 464,135. That's approximately 50% straight away the, uh, the reduction in the number of lines. Rest roughing was 332,000 lines, whereas in uh, with ArcFit, it's down to 121,000 lines in, with ArcFit. Finishing, very important line. It's approximately uh, 250740. I think it's about 2.5 million lines, whereas uh, uh, with ArcFit, it's just 1.4 million lines. So it's like 50%. Now, there are a couple of uh, very important uh, advantages you get when you go with ArcFit. First of all, of course, your G-code size comes down uh, dramatically down. The other major imp uh, improvement that you see is the way the machine behaves when it's cutting. Uh, when it gets a lot of point to compute, some of the machines really don't have the computing power to move fast on, on, those, uh, on those points. 
those thousands of points that are generated instead of a single arc. Uh, new generation uh, machines, which are really highly complex, can handle it. But there are some machines even now that cannot handle uh, thousands of lines when, when they are, th or rather, thousands of points when they come together. So there, the arcs can greatly improve the performance of the machine as well as the surface quality because when you're cutting an arc and when you're cutting a, a, a area made up of thousands of points there is a difference in the quality of surface that you see at the end so major major change however a word of caution this feature will be completely uh, available to the end user only with the solid cam 2022 sp2 not sp1 but sp2 it will be opened up uh, the arc fit now supports all the three planes it supports xy plane yz plane and also zx plane so we can do arc fit even in linear uh, machining constant z machining so wherever it's possible to fit an arc if it is if the uh, line is exactly on xz plane yz plane or xy plane it will fit the arc uh, somebody asked me a question i'm i'm actually going to also answer questions as and when they come up so there is a a small thing called as an arc fit factor here now what is the arc fit factor basically uh, let's make a small drawing here okay let's assume i have got uh, some lines like this okay and the system then tries to put an arc one arc here another arc here and maybe another arc here uh, the tolerance by which the, or the deviation of the toll of the deviation value here within which it puts the arc is controlled by the factor now what does the factor do the deviation here let's say is up to 0 0.01 which is my tolerance of cutting okay uh, which is the toolpath tolerance up to 0 0.01 if it finds an arc it it will fit because my factor is 1 1 multiplied by my cut tolerance is the deviation allowed if i put here two that means up to 0 0.02 i'm allowing this deviation to go ahead so uh, what happens is if you're getting let's say if i have thousand lines or thousand points in my tool path and if i use a factor one i might probably get uh, 150 arcs but if i increase my factor to let's say two I might get instead of 150, 350 to 400 arcs. So I will get more arcs as I change or increase the factor. But the downside is that as you keep increasing the uh, the uh, arc fit factor, the deviation also starts increasing. So you you run into the risk of either overcutting or leaving more material on the part when you fit the arc. Okay. So generally. Our thumb rule for arc fit factor is one, but if you are uh, doing finishing and if you are really going very close, if the tolerance is really very tight, then I think reducing the factor and not increasing the factor is the uh, is is what we would suggest here. So that's the arc fit factor basically. Uh, another important thing, although very uh, small, is the uh, uh, is the uh, uh, example where uh, we have this feature where we can define now a circumcised circle, a circumscribed circle. The tool parts basically are checked against the circumscribed circle to detect and filter the slices that are smaller than the threshold value. For example, I don't want the tool path to actually go into this pocket. Rather than blocking the pocket by defining a boundary, I define a circumscribed circle value and anything that is falling within the circumscribed value, the tool paths or the slices will be deleted and the tool paths will not uh, go into that, in, in, in that area. Earlier, it was just a diagonal length. Okay. Okay. Right now, we are uh, in, improved that to give you a circumscribed circle uh, feature also. Uh, another very important thing that uh, you see now in 3-axis is basically the filtering of uh, of uh, air, uh, of passes so many a times you can see that uh, especially when you're doing rest roughing there are very small passes insignificant passes which get generated because there was a little bit of stock somewhere which is actually insignificant 
Now, there's really no, there was really no way to remove them. In 2022, now we have got what we call as a filtering and we can specify the small amount of a value. For example, here, if I specify a value of five millimeter, you can see on my, on the right side, the passes are automatically removed out. It gets filtered out. Any pass which has got a length less than five millimeter automatically will get filtered out and removed from the toolpath. So thereby we actually make the toolpath very clean and also helps in reducing the machining time because it doesn't have to go into those insignificant areas to do just one touch and it comes back. That it doesn't have to do. So that's how we have uh, helped it to reduce the uh, machining time and also helps in re uh, removing those small irrelevant view, uh, moves. A uh, few more uh, thing is that uh, we have um, given a feature called as a skip default fallback sequence. It's, it's not very, very important. It's a very small and marginal improvement. This basically uh, enables the retract moves to the clearance plane height, avoiding the intermediate retractions of the feed Rapid distance in this case is requested uh, can be direct or blend spline links within the uh, when blend spline links and uh, direct rapid cannot be created. It takes it up to the clearance plane. So it's a very small, uh, not not that great uh, thing to be talked about much. Uh, in Turbo HSR, we have now an option to provide fixture offsets on the curve itself. So if I can provide two curves as a fixture or my clamp, I can then provide a further offset to those uh, to those curves and the toolpath is then accordingly trimmed and it doesn't uh, go into that area at all where you expect the clamps to be placed. Uh, another very important thing that we uh, released with our turbo machining is the horizontal machining inside Turbo HSM. Uh, Turbo HSM just had uh, constant Z, linear, constant cusp, and then we had the rest machining and constant Z, linear, as well as constant cusp. Now we have added the horizontal machining, which helps you to do absolutely planar surfaces using an end mill or a pull-down tool. And this option is now available inside Turbo HSM. <clears throat> uh, coming to the undercut milling, uh, we have an option now to remove uh, air cuts. For example, if you look at the figure on the left-hand side, I'm go actually going to show you this part. Uh, when the shank com comes close to the part, it actually doesn't, the tool actually doesn't machine anything. It simply does air movements in this area. So undercut machining now has an option to remove those air passes and those passes you can see on the right hand side are automatically trimmed off you don't you don't get those passes at all so it saves a lot of machining time unnecessary areas just it's going to go in air is avoided i'm going to show you this part uh, moving on to five axis i think this is where we have we are going to see a quite a lot of jump and improve in terms of uh, features and some of them are very, very exciting. Some of them have been requested by our resellers uh, from, a, from a long time. And uh, those particular features actually put us, uh, uh, put us a notch above our competitors. First of all, edge breaking. Earlier, edge breaking used to support only ball nose and lollipop end mills. Edge, mill, edge, uh, edge breaking now supports a host of cutters like end mills, ball nose tool, taper mill, taper ball nose, lollipop, as well as chamfer end mills. So you can now support, six, it does support six different types of end mills and tool parts can be made with any of the uh, tools that has been shown in this figure. Now edge breaking actually comes up uh, with two, two uh, types of uh, breaking. Edge breaking can generate a chamfer and edge breaking can also generate a fillet on the edge itself. The chamfer has got a unique uh, facility. I mean, it's, it's a, it has a unique feature. For example, if you're using an end mill to do the chamfer, you can specify where should be the cutting point of the end mill when it is doing the chamfer on the, uh, on the part. It need not be exactly at the edge. You can specify 20% inside, 
when I when I say 20%, I mean let's say my cutting length is 10 mm. So my cutting point of the or the chamfer will move two millimeter upwards, and that area will be used to uh, drive the tool to make the chamfer. For example, in this case, you can see that I have used a, a chamfer uh, uh, or the contact point at at 30 percent so at 30 percent this is where is my contact point and that is used to make the chamfer on the part so you can specify for example on this edge you can say i want 30 percent on this edge i can i make a different tool path i'll say i want it at 35 percent so by doing that i actually end up enhancing my tool life and not use the same point for all the entire area you can specify 10 different areas to be used on one point remaining on another so that greatly enhances the tool life like i said chamf uh, edge breaking now can create two different uh, profiles it can create a chamfer and if you're using a ball nose tool it can create even a fillet on the edge so we have an option called as multiple passes so when i enable multiple passes I get the option of either doing a flat chamfer or a rounded profile on the edge. So I can make a chamfer as well as I can make the uh, uh, fillet. A very big feature has been released and this is where we're going to spend a lot of time understanding this feature in, uh, uh, in SolidCam 5 axis. And that is to use uh, the new generation barrel tools to machine floor as well as walls automatically. Our nearest and the biggest competitor has it from quite a some time, but I think we are going to go a notch above them because of uh, the openness of our system in allowing to do whatever the user wants to do, yet retaining the automation. Okay, so the barrel tools or multi-axis machining can now finish wall floor using barrel tools automatically the user defines the target the wall and the floor surface once this is defined everything else taken over by solid cam in the coming uh, service packs we'll also release the rest roughing or rest machining by defining the boundaries with using barrel tools right now we have to do it using our five axis. I'm going to show you it's super easy. You don't have to really spend time because uh, what I have not shown you in the presentation is some of the uh, most uh, uh, eye catching improvements that we have done in geodesic machining. And that uh, geodesic machining itself will take care of all the areas that need to be finished after you have used the barrel tools. So we, ha we have a nice part and I'm going to show you uh, quite some exam uh, quite a few tool parts on that. Uh, coming to the end of the presentation, uh, like I told you that we made a dramatic change to our calculation time using Turbo HSR, and the same is reflected also in rotary roughing. Okay, uh, in 2021, the rotary roughing for let's say for this particular part used to take two and a half minutes. In 2022, the same part is being calculated in 41 seconds. So that is big, big shift in the uh, in the calculation times of uh, rotary roughing. It's approximately three and a half times to five times depending on the part, okay? So on an average, we are about four times faster than what we used to be in 2021. Right, uh, let's go uh, to the parts and I will show you some very nice examples now. First, I'm gonna start off with uh, the turbo. I want to show you the calculation time of this part. Uh, if uh, you're using this part, of your, if you have seen this part, uh, let's make a, a measurement to see what size of this part is. It's approximately 400 by 200. And I think uh, this, the deepest point is somewhere here. This approximately is about 76 mm. So it's 400. Uh, 200 by 76 so it's a reasonably large part with a lot of features and i would now love to do the uh, 
let's change some parameters because I don't want it to use uh, the same parameters. So I'm going to change the global offset to 0.75. Uh, the tool, of course, will remain the same. Uh, constraint boundaries, automatic. Passes, uh, I would change this to 0.35 millimeter. And the step over remains at, let's say, 50%. Okay, everything else I will probably keep uh, the same. I'm not going to change anything. You can see here in the point distribution, we now have got an arc fit. Okay, I'm going to change this arc fit factor to one. First of all, I'm going to switch off the arc fit and then we will look at the arc fit value. I'm going to just save this and let's calculate this tool path. This is a real-time calculation, by the way. Four seconds, and the roughing is calculated. So this is the speed right now we are talking with the uh, turbo roughing. That's really fast. So you can imagine if I put a part of one meter by even half a meter by, let's say, a quarter of a meter, 1,000 by 500 by 250, Probably it'll end up taking anywhere between 35, 40 seconds and the calculation will be done. I think today we are going to be one of the fastest systems to calculate in three axis with the Turbo HSR and Turbo HSM. We are in fact, because we have done some real, uh, real world tests against our nearest and the biggest competitors in three axis, the big names in three axis, and we have found that we are really fast. We are far ahead in terms of calculations when it comes to three axis. And of course, uh, the hardware architecture makes a lot of difference. So if you're using an i7, uh, let's say I have got a six uh, or eight core and 16 processors, or if I go on an i9, which is like uh, uh, 10 cores and 20 uh, logical processors, the speed dramatically increases because of the cores. Since it's a 64-bit system and it uses all the cores available on the, uh, on the, on the machine, the speed dramatically uh, changes. So if I now generate, uh, let's generate a G code, because I would like to look at the number of lines that it generates. Now, this particular G code that uh, we are having is without the arc fit. So obviously I'm gonna get thousands and thousands and thousands of lines. Okay, uh, uh, Herve, you're asking me how to plunge from outside. It's pretty simple. I'll show you that. So, uh, it's approximately about uh, a million lines, okay? That's without the arc fit. Now, I'm going to enable the arc fit. And I'll keep the factor as one. We'll just calculate this. Let's run the G code. Um, apart from reducing the size of the G code, there's another valuable uh, change an arc fit does, and that is in the updated stock calculation. Updated stock calculation dramatically uh, improves on toolpaths that use ArcFit versus the toolpaths that don't use ArcFit because of the sheer number of points that it needs to calculate when it is doing the updated stock calculation. So if you have an ArcFit, it can straight away come down to half the updated stock calculation time. Okay, so that was a million lines. Let's look here. And you can see these are only 248,000 lines. 80% lines are gone. So it's much smaller toolpath when it comes to uh, ArcFit. It gets better. So if you want a much more tighter one, you reduce the factor to 0 0.5. So Herve, you asked me about how to plunge from outside. It's, it's actually easy. Uh, what we have here in Turbo HSR, it's a bit, it's not tricky. I would say it's very smart. If I go into the geometry, I need to respect the stock model. This has to be on. 
but at the same time the constraint boundaries must be off when the constraint boundary is off and my stock is is on it realizes that it need not plunge inside because it doesn't violate any condition when you have given the constraint boundary it it can't plunge outside because it will it will violate the boundary conditions okay and this is the way you will allow it to plunge from outside so whenever you want a situation where you would like the tool to plunge from outside switch on the stock and switch off the constraint boundary You can see automatically the toolpath is now out and it has gone out and it approaches from outside. It doesn't because it does, doesn't care about the uh, constraint boundary anymore because that is not acting as a that is not acting as a as a constraint anymore and doesn't violate that condition anymore. So just defining the stock and removing the boundary automatically pulls the tool out of the uh, stock plunges outside and it comes in okay so this is the way you need to uh, handle it okay uh, another very important thing that i uh, told you that going to show is the fixtures so let's assume that these two sketches that i've created are my uh, clamps okay right now i've just made two just to show you the feature so I'm going to use this in the geometry in the fixture. I'll pick the extruding curves. Pick the curve here, pick the curve here. And of course, I have the option now to provide an offset. So I'll say five millimeter. Let's calculate it. Okay, so that's how it trims the toolpath and ensures that there are no uh, retracts up here. But you can also specify where your uh, where your uh, fixture is. So you can also specify your fixture height. What is the thickness of your fixture? So that it will take the uh, rapids over that particular height. I have now just defined only the offset. I can al you can also specify, for example, if the thickness of the clamp is about 25 millimeter, you specify another 10 millimeters more, and the rapids will go over that particular point. Right. So uh, this is about uh, uh, this is about the uh, arc fit and uh, the calculation. Uh, like I said, the arc fit is available in XY plane, in XZ plane and also yz plane so it supports the only thing uh, you need to change is going to be your post processors okay currently i think most of the post processors don't have the third dimension in the in the arc for example it, they don't have the k values in the arc so this has to be inserted in your in your gpp and also you have to support uh, in in vmid you'll have to open the other options of the arc only then the uh, g code gets generated otherwise you will see that you will get a wrong G code, especially when you're doing the XZ and YZ arcs. Right, let's move uh, quickly to the next one. And this is about the boundaries in geodesic. Uh, in 2022, if there is one feature that has undergone dramatic amount of change, dramatic amount of, uh, of improvement, and that is the geodesic machining, okay? slowly but surely geodesic will uh, will be in a position to replace most of these strategies inside our generic five axis and because of its sheer amount of automation that has been built especially in the geometry selection area people will or users will like to uh, will prefer to use geodesic instead of our 
generic five axis and also for the fact that it generates a very clean tool path as compared with the generic in most of the cases you have the spacing which is very very nicely done people will prefer to use geodesic machining uh, let's look at an area here so i want i want to show you one of the features for example if i edit this so in geometry type in in geodesic under the input type or area type we have got a new option called as medial axis very very important it's a very small word out there but it it dramatically changes the way geodesic works okay so let's look at some of the options first of all if i use automatic machining area of that surface this is how the tool path comes now this is how it was coming even earlier okay let's switch off this and let's go to the next one the next one uses what we call as the surface boundary not the area but it uses the automatic surface boundary so the curves are extracted from the surface boundary so this is how it will again look very similar to the uh, machining area of the previous tool path now the next option is the center point okay it will automatically create one center point and then the tool paths will go parallel to the center points as if it's doing a radial kind of a machining okay simple so it created one center point and the tool paths now go parallel to that machine and machine the surface now what is medial axis now medial axis uh, actually is appearing at two places in geodesic okay the first medial axis will appear here in the input type now what it what it does when i say medial axis it will take the surface and it will try and extract the central curve of this surface and once it extracts the central curve of the surface it will then create the cuts parallel to that central axis okay so if i calculate this tool path with the medial axis on you can see that it extracted the central curve and then every other cuts are now going parallel to that central axis okay so this is one of the places where we have got the medial axis another place where we have got the medial axis i'll come to that is out here oh sorry that's not the area i'll come to that in in another example where we have got another uh, medial axis and that particular uh, medial axis is out here in uh, in the round corners option okay so i'll i'll, I'll come to that uh, another feature that we put in into geodesic is the uh, boundaries okay so i have got this surface i want to machine this fillet so if i go by my 2021 method of extracting or creating the tool path if i go into the constraint boundaries we all, all always had the automatic or we had to define our own boundary so the tool path somehow used to appear like this okay this is how the tool path used to appear in 2021 when automatic boundary was selected for the surface now in 2022 i have got an option where i pick the surface and i automatically create the 3d boundaries of those surfaces and if i now run the same tool path only with that option on i see a completely different tool path it's exactly calculated the boundary and it has taken the contact point of the of the tool and brought the contact point to touch exactly to the end of the uh, end of the uh, surface and that's how it has extracted the boundaries okay uh, let's check if we have an option to uh, show it no there's no option to show it so internally this this boundaries are shown so what it has basically done is it has extracted this boundaries and then given us some kind of an offset in order to create the contact point of the tool exactly coming at the edge of these surfaces okay so this is another very nice uh, 
option that we introduced in uh, in geodesic uh, i'm also going to show you the medial axis one of the uh, uh, not not the medial axis i'm going to show you another example of geodesic on what changes we have done uh, and why i claim uh, so confident that uh, why i'm so confident that uh, over a period of time geodesic is going to replace some of the uh, functions in in the generic five axis let's open sorry let's close this first open a new file yeah the medial cuts now let's look at the medial no okay so let's look at this surface here okay the surface out here we are now looking at this surface and this is a situation you're going to get in most of the three axis or even some five axis tool parts so if i calculate the tool path as it would look in 2021 this is how it would look you'll get one pass here another big pass here so here the area in between this the material gets left out okay the material is getting left out but in 2022 in solid cam if i go into the geodesic uh, here and if I go into the toolpath parameters and uh, let's go into modify and under the round corners we now have the option called as medial axis now this is another place where you have the medial axis uh, and in this medial axis you have got two options first of all the medial axis toolpath will be included in the toolpath itself or it will be done separately after the main toolpath has run so you have got both the options so let's look when it is included in the corners how the toolpath gets generated you see what happened to the toolpath here i've got this corner and then there is an extension of the corner right up into this area here and also in this area there is an extension into the uh, tool there is an extension for this toolpath so it will first do the triangle then do this and then come back and do the other extension so whatever material that is getting left out between this toolpath passes will now get eliminated using the medial axis toolpath so <clears throat> this particular feature now has got two options either it will machine the medial axis inside the toolpath itself as as part of one toolpath or the second option is if I calculate the next tool path where I've set separate contours, it will make the medial axis as a separate tool path inside the main tool path itself. So what will the tool path look like? First, it will do this triangle, then it will do the big triangle, then the third triangle, fourth, and so on. After it has finished, it will come back and then do the medial tool paths. So both the options are now given to the user. William, you are asking if uh, geodesic three axis is part of the HSM. Ideally, yes, it's a part of HSM itself. So anybody buying three axis will automatically get the geodesic three axis. Right, uh, let's move ahead. We've got a few more uh, tool paths that I want to show you with geodesic. Uh, then there is an extract curve. So let's go to the undercut machining first, and then I'll come to the geodesic again. So I explained to you that we have now an option in uh, undercut milling to remove uh, air passes, especially when the tool has entered inside and the shank is in collision with the part. So it pushes the shank outwards and then whatever area remains is only going to do air passes. It's not actually going to cut anything. So we have this option here. So if I go into the passes, the first one I'm going to show you is only machine the undercuts, okay? Don't remove any air passes, but just machine the undercuts. And if I run the calculation, this is the option, and this is how it will machine the undercuts. But let's look at the main option that I talked about. I'm not going to remove air cuts, and I'm going to calculate this. So if I look at the tool path that it has done, you can see up to here it did the 
uh, undercut machining and after that this pass onwards it's actually not doing any cutting it's it's leaving material so these passes not completely but from here to here up to here are only cutting air they are not doing anything so this particular feature of remove air cuts eliminates those passes so calculate this Oops, sorry and now if i show you the tool path you can see that those passes are completely removed out there is no more air cuts it's only machining material and wherever material cannot be machined or where it can't touch and it's going to do air cuts those areas are automatically trimmed off in undercut machining so this is about undercut uh, let's go to the next part and this is about rotary now when i'm touching a rotary i would also like to show you the calculation speed of rotary how it has changed with the 2022 so i'll go to the first tool path which is rotary roughing and the uh, tool path parameters tolerance is 0.1 let's say my depth of cut is 0 0.4 step over is 6 millimeter save this and let's calculate the tool path again the calculation is real time Twelve seconds it took, and my part is machined completely. So this is a dramatic change in terms of the calculation speed of uh, rotary roughing. Now I'll show you another feature that we brought in into geodesic, but on the multi-axis side. I'm going to edit this tool path. It's a geodesic again, multi-axis geodesic part. Uh, okay, so I have this surface. And what I have said here is extract automatic curves of this surface uh, because I'm using the morph between two bar curves. I want the curves to be extracted automatically so that the machining follows that the pattern of those curves. And what I'm expecting is that it will find this particular curve here, what, I, what is getting highlighted, this one and this one. I'm expecting that this is what it will come up to. So I'm going to run the calculation. This will take some time because it needs to do a lot of work in terms of extraction. Oops, an error that is very, very familiar in geodesic machining that it fails to extract the drive curve. And it's asking me to select the curve manually. And this is when we used to go back and say user defined curve and select those two curves and do it, not anymore. So in geodesic machining under advanced in the geometry curves, there's a new option called as extract flow curves. Now what extract flow curves does is it finds the longest possible dimension of that surface and only extracts those curves. Because when I say extract flow curves, it's also possible that it can extract the front curve of it. But this is not the longest curve. The longest curve is this one. So it will extract that curve, okay? And generally, this is a fail-safe one. Now I'll calculate the stool path. It's a fail-safe one, and it will create the stool path now.
again it's going to take some time i think this takes about 55 milliseconds to one minute 10 seconds or something not very sure about it Okay, so let's calculate the tool path. And that's the tool path of both the surfaces. So I did not specify any curves. I just said extract the flow curves and then machine this these surfaces. So now you can see the avenues opening up. For example, any any part that needs morph between two curves, you can simply switch to geodesic. No need to select any curves. You see, just say extract the flow curves and it will extract the longest possible curves and then machine the surfaces that you have defined. So it saves it saves a lot of time uh, and it saves that effort to find the curve, especially if there are, let's say, thousands, uh, hundreds of surfaces and you really have to go and pick the curves, that effort to select those curves really gets saved. A very nice feature uh, coming from Geodesic. Let's go ahead. Okay. Now this particular option that I'm going to talk about comes from the fact uh, comes from a feature inside the collision checking. Earlier, when I uh, used to go to the collision check and say tilt, and the tilted angle always would refer to the z-axis so if it would tilt 30 degrees it would tilt to the initial direction which is basically the z-axis and it would tilt 30 degrees to the z-axis so if i look at my first tool path and check this here if i go to my collision so i have got the uh, tilt tool here and in the advanced its relative direction is from the initial direction and the maximum tilt can be plus minus 30 this is what i've defined you can go plus minus 90 also but whatever these angles are are going to be applied only from the initial direction which is the z-axis in in our case so if i run this calculation and this is available in uh, both geodesic as well as the generic five axis Okay, so now if I run the simulation, you can see that the collision applied is to the initial direction. Okay, so that 30 degrees is now getting applied to the initial direction. But if I change this, my second tool path, and if I go again to the tilt tool uh, advanced feature, I have got tilting is applied now not to the initial direction but from the surface normal that means this angles are now going to be calculated with reference to the surface normal at that particular point so if you look at the tool path how this would look like the same one no change except the the uh, auto tilt has been changed and you can see now that that particular tilt has been applied to the surface normal if this was my surface normal that angle has been applied from the surface normal and not from the initial direction this is another subtle change that we have done inside our uh, collision checking strategy right let's move to the next part Uh, okay, this is another very nice feature. Let's assume that I have a part, something like that. And I want to machine this groove. Okay, so let's calculate this tool path. And let's simulate this. You can see my first entry itself is going to cause a collision because it's entering directly on the part in order to avoid this we were doing a lot of jugglery like uh, giving a uh, giving a extension to the tool path 
or providing a very large entry uh, arc into the toolpath. A lot of things we were doing uh, to prevent this. Now with the new uh, 2021, 2022, I'm so sorry. Uh, if I go into the levels, we have got a new feature here called as rapid distance or retract is uh, allowed now on the tool plane. So I can specify or I can just select this, switch on the rapid distance in tool plane. So whatever is the distance is 20 millimeters, the retract distance is applied on the tool plane. It's not from the Z axis or from your initial direction, but on the tool plane. Now tool plane is exactly the plane on which the tool is starting its first cut. So that plane, it applies the retract. So it will pull the tool path out in the same plane. So if I calculate this stone tool path, you can see what happened. It pulled the tool path, the retract out in the same direction. So if I now take my uh, simulation and go, it will safely come. This is rapid. The next position is rapid, and then it will start cutting the part. Again, rapid, and it's out. So another nice feature, and not only that, I can apply angles to this. I don't, I, I don't have to get it straight out. I'll say, get it at 45 degrees. And my retract comes out now at 45 degrees. It doesn't come straight anymore. <clears throat> so another very small but nice feature that you can apply to different parts here. Even parts like the twisted part can now get uh, the uh, retraction. So you can see the retract pulled out in the tool plane direction and the retract pulled out in the tool plane direction. I don't have to specify which direction it is. I just say the tool plane and it pulls out in the same plane on which the first cut or the last exit was. Okay, let's move to the next one. Another change that we made in uh, in SIM 5 axis was in uh, multi-axis roughing. Okay, so I'm going to calculate the multi-axis roughing, nothing uh, big in this. Just simply calculate the uh, tool path. By the way, the change happened in Turbo HSR is also getting reflected in multi-axis roughing. Okay, so whatever uh, speed uh, improvement that you saw in uh, multi axis in Turbo HSR, some portion of it has also been carried over into multi axis roughing. So it's also very fast here. So let's look at this toolpath, looks harmless unless we run the simulation now. Oh, let's go to solid verify, it's much more simpler. So this is my stock. And The very first is a crash. Why this happened? This happened for a very obvious reason. So if I uh, show you my stock on the model, you can see that my stock is much bigger than my part itself. But my tool path was only calculated from within the part. But my stock is big enough. Now this was a simple one. People could put an argument and said, okay, you could have run the uh, facing program to remove the excess stock, but assume that this was not a straight part, but a twisted part with a big stock. How would you do that? That would become another challenge, and uh, we don't want to do that. So in multi-axis roughing in 2022, we have got an option now under stock, and that is to extend the cuts all the way up to the stock. Okay, you don't need to find out where your stock is. As long as your stock is defined, solid cam will extend those cuts right directly up to the stock. You can see that it automatically pulled up the cuts all the way up to the stock material. So if you look at my stock now, you can see my first cut is right inside. It actually starts from above the stock it ramps down to the first plane and it starts removing the material and then it actually cuts the part as it is. So a very nice feature, especially when you're having excess stock and you really don't know 
how much stock is remaining it's always better to extend the cuts up to the stock to make sure that you safely remove the material even in areas where the stock was more than what you anticipated and but you did not recognize it all right to the next one because we have got a very very interesting one coming up now I'm coming to the most important part of the presentation, and that is uh, multi-axis machining using barrel mills. So you will ask me, this is a simple part. Oh, it looks simple, but it is not. Uh, first of all, if I go into the curvature analysis, I've got a very large curvature at the bottom and also on the top. So this is like uh, R 10,000, 9,000 roughly, and the same thing here, it's about R2000. So it's not a straight part. Okay. So definitely end mills uh, uh, cannot. And plus the fact that it's a deep part, it's very difficult to machine this with end mills. So ball nose tools will be used to machine this with ball nose with a to generate a scallop of even let's say uh, five to six microns. You will have to go with a step down of about 0.2 to 0.3 millimeter. To uh, overcome this, uh, tools like uh, barrel tools are used to machine it till uh, 2021 barrel tools uh, were part of our generic uh, machining or generic five axis of course you could do great work with it but it required a lot of manual effort to uh, get a very good tool path the same thing now is uh, uh, is available under multi-axis machining. So if you look at our multi-axis machining uh, package, you'll see that you get two more options other than roughing. One is wall finishing, and another other one is floor finishing. So let's focus on wall finishing, where we have the definition. First definition here is the surfaces, and this is our complete target. Why do we have to define a complete target? because the collision check is done against the complete target. You don't have to specify, do the collision check only against this surface or this surface. It will take the entire model and run the collision checks when it is calculating the tool path. And then the next definition is a floor surface. So I'll show you the floor surface. Now, very important that the floor surface, if it has fillets, should also comprise of the fillets. They also become a part of the floor. So don't exclude the fillets, include the fillets. The reason is that anything that is touching the wall surface should be taken inside as a floor. So here, apart from this, the uh, fillets are also touching the wall surface. So the fillets will belong to the floor surface. And then of course, we have the wall. You can have the wall surface. Now, this is the best part. People compare us with our competition and say, look, they have an automatic thing. Remember, the competition has got an automatic thing where they can machine only one surface at a time, especially when they're using the taper, taper form, uh, taper barrel cutter. In solid cam, we have gone a notch ahead. You can define multiple surfaces. As long as they are connected to the floor, you can define more than one. Okay, here you can see. I've picked up three surfaces and all the three surfaces can be picked up and it will machine one by one, okay? And then if you want a certain uh, pattern to be generated, not necessary that you need, to, uh, you need to do it always, but if you want a certain pattern, you can specify a user-defined curve or you could say automatically generate the flow curve automatically generate the ceiling curve. Here I've used the uh, user-defined curve and I've just picked up three curves, one, two, and three, the edges of those three surfaces as my curve. The tool I'm using here is a barrel taper. So if you look at how it looks like, this is how it is. It has got two radiuses. The large radius is R250. That is what allows us to go with bigger depth of cuts and yet generate a very fine scallop. And the lower R is two millimeters. And the taper angle, because it's a taper barrel, it's about 20 degrees. Okay, so this is a tool. 
levels mostly everything is the same there's nothing uh, different constraint boundaries i'm not using anything because i've specified my surfaces i don't need to specify any constraint boundaries and toolpath parameters i've used a step down of two millimeters roughly about anywhere between 1.7 to 2 millimeters can give you a scallop of 10 microns or less than that which otherwise would have uh, would have needed you to give define a depth of cut of even uh, less than 0.3 with even a 16 diameter ball nose tool so that's the kind of difference that you will see in terms of machining time the tool axis control here becomes crucial okay most of the times the values that you're seeing on the screen work absolutely fine so what we have i have a preferred contact point at 20 percent of the cutting area of the barrel tool the cutting area is very clearly defined in yellow in our case in the tool so 20 percent i want the tool to be in contact at 20 percent of the uh cutting area minimum is set also to 20 and the maximum is set at 60 percent of the cutting area so zero is at the bottom 100 is where the cutting edge ends so anything in between that is the interpolation of the distances so i have kept the minimum at 20 percent and maximum at 60 percent here the cutting implies only the r250 okay we are not taking the r2 into consideration only the r250 is taken into account and then of course the lead lag angle can be set they are default at minus 45 to plus 45 they work very fine a linking is set to clearance blend spline okay and there is no collision check because we have already defined our part so automatically the collision checks will be taken into account uh, it's nothing more just save it and i'll calculate this tool path done so this is how now the toolpath looks like when it is machining the wall and let's look at the simulation solid verify because it's, it looks nice i've defined a stock uh, as an offset of the uh, part kept about 0.5 and this is how the uh, simulation will look like neat tool path no need to define any of your uh, geometries for tilting and other things automatically when the holder is in collision with the uh, side area the lead lag angle will be applied you can see the moment it goes into the collision the lead lag angle gets applied And the tool makers, the cutting tool manufacturers who manufacture such tools, they claim that the cutting time can be down as much as 70 to 80 percent when you compare it with uh, the ball nose tools. It's obvious that with a ball nose tool, you can just take a, a down step of only about 0.3, whereas here you're taking almost about two millimeters and yet generating the same scallop. How do we uh, check that? I can simply go here to my uh, uh, comparison and i'll compare it you can see it's yellow all the way the zero there are no uh, bumps of scallop uh, remaining okay uh, very important this was one of the most critical features asked by several of our resellers uh, because hey our competition had it so we have to have it so here you have it okay now let's go uh, ahead and uh, let's machine the floor again here we are a few notches ahead of our competition for floor machining 
our competition needs a lens tool. We also need a lens tool, but we can trick the software here. It's a legal trick and you can do that. What I'm going to do here is I have, I'm using again the wall finishing itself. However, this time I have inverted my selection. For, for example, my floor are now my wall surface itself. Okay, this is my floor are my wall surfaces and my wall surfaces is the floor itself so i have inverted the selection i've made my earlier wall as my floor and my earlier floor as my wall and what i've done here is instead of using a lens tool i'm using the same taper uh, uh, taper barrel tool with a very large radius r250 okay now this is a very nice trick and solid cam generates excellent toolpath using this method so here again two millimeter step over will generate the same scallop that i would get using a ball nose and a step down step over of 0 0.3 millimeter now you're going to ask me why did i use a taper ball nose uh, or a taper barrel at the floor and not an end mill because it looks flat, but it is not flat. It has got a very large curvature of one uh, ten thousand. Okay, so very nice tool path. Let's run the simulation here. Uh, before I do that, let's suppress a couple, couple of tool paths. I don't want to see this, so let's go to suppress unlock. And let's simulate the next tool path. Solid verify. Okay, so this is my area and this is how it's going to machine the floor. It's it does the work pretty neat. Uh, I can tell you that a lot of effort has gone in developing this function and my team was a critical part of this development. We know the amount of uh, uh, work, amount of definitions that have gone into developing this function, uh, how much of, of research our team has done in getting this function up and running, okay? And the effort is in front of you. So we can now machine the floor both with a taper barrel as well as the lens form tool, okay? When I use wall, I will use the uh, taper uh, barrel. And when I'm using the uh, lens, I can directly use the floor, uh, floor machining technique. So it's done really very neatly. Okay, then I've got the dedicated floor machining functionality itself. So I've got the geometry where my floor surface is the same but in this case my wall surface are all these surfaces okay and here the wall also includes the fillet remember earlier the fillet was belonging to the wall but when you're using the lens form tool and machining only the floor the fillets now belong to the wall okay and i have this tool out here which is a lens form tool if you look at the radius very carefully, I've got a large radius of 25R here, R2, and then a straight one. And if I look at the tool axis control, my preferred is 30. That's where I want the contact to be. Minimum is zero and maximum is also set to 30. Let's calculate this. Okay, so this is how it will work now with the lens form tool. If I run the simulation and run into the host CAD, it's now using the large radius R25 and machining the floor. We can do bi-directional or we could do one way. I have preferred one way in this case and use the blend spline option, which does a pretty neat job. And the best part is I can define a different feed when I'm doing the connections. 
Okay, so this is using the uh, lens form tool. Now you'll ask me, what about the material that was left out here in, in our competition is automatic. I think it's a no brainer as far as uh, solid cam is concerned. It's very easy to do the tool path. So what I've done, I'm using our trusted geodesic engine. I've selected the surface here. If you look, I've picked the surface. I've picked the uh, curve. And I've simply said in the tool axis, fixed 25 degrees to Z axis. And in order that it doesn't change the angle when it is doing this machining, I've also used on the advanced to maintain a common axis direction or the common tool axis. What this will do is it will find the best possible axis direction and fix it and then just do simple three axis machining. Okay, so let's calculate this and it can be applied to any of your areas. For example, now you can see simple with a taper ball nose. That's it. Three, four passes, whatever area was remaining, it's all done and it retracts out. You can use this functionality of geodesic and uh, tilted to Z axis and common direction. If it is a single wall, you can use common direction. It works very well. If it's multiple wall, don't try to use common direction. There you can just uh, use uh, tilted to Z axis at, at a particular angle and everything else will be taken care of. Okay, so this is about our multi-axis machining functionality. Of course, uh, in the SPs that will be released later on, we'll also be introducing the rest machining functionality, which would uh, remove the need of making such tool paths because it will take care of the area that was not machined by the previous tool, okay? So this was about the main feature we have in uh, Solid Chem 2022 is as far as the uh, wall and floor machining functionality with Paper, uh, the barrel tools are concerned. Let's go to the last part for today, and I'm going to open the edge breaking part. Okay, so I would like to do the edge breaking now. And if you open the edge breaking tool path, and if I go into the tools, and if I select, I get all these six different types of tools that I can pick. Earlier, it was only restricted to lollipop mill as well as ball nose. But now I, I have the option of selecting end mills, taper, end, taper mills, taper ball nose or chamfer mills also. Uh, here I've picked the geometry manually because I want to show you a few options. The tool here I've picked up is diameter six flattened mill. And I, I'm sorry, should not have closed it. In the uh, tool path parameters, I have said, I just want one cut and the depth of that or the width of that chamfer here is going to be approximately 0.2 millimeter and in the tool axis control i can I have this option now of controlling which portion of the tool i want to use for cutting so i've currently set the uh, the point or the or the cutting contact point at 20 percent of the flute length so let me calculate this tool path if i run the simulation let's show the solid verify Let's go slowly. You can see 20% is in contact. And now that's how it will break the edges. Simple, I can straight away use a, an end mill and I can do the uh, chamfering or edge breaking. Now I can do another thing also. Uh, I'll change the tool and I'll go with a ball nose here. And with the tool path parameters, of course, I have got, uh, I will say I want uh, 10 cuts. And the moment I uh, take out or make multi cuts, I get the edge shape function switched on. The edge shape function now allows me to define whether I want a flat. Uh, like I want a chamfer or I want a fillet. So I can just say I would like to round it out to this particular value, okay? And then we'll switch off the contact point definition because it doesn't, uh, the contact point doesn't work with multiple cuts, 
Okay, let's save it and run the calculation. Done. So you can see very clearly with the shape itself, I'm getting a fillet straight over here. Okay, so let's run the uh, simulation. Let's increase the speed a bit. One way. So if you want to create a rounded edge, you can do that now very easily inside SolidCam. So if I zoom this area, you can see that it has created a rounded edge. No longer a flat, but now you can, it allows you to create a rounded edge. Of course, it will also allow you to do flat, but flat you can anyway do it with a flattened mill uh, with the side of the tool. So we don't need that. But if you want to do a rounded edge, you are now allowed to do that using the edge breaking cycle. Right, so, uh, I believe uh, I've shown you all the most important features that we released in 2022. Of course, we will release a few more in the coming SP uh, that I did not show you here because currently they are under the testing and I can't talk about it unless and until they are fully tested. So few more features are on the way, uh, but these were the main features. Uh, I believe I have, uh, uh, somebody has asked me for the parts. Of course, yes, I'm, I'm going to upload the parts tonight. You should get the link tomorrow morning on the parts that I've used. Also the PowerPoint, if you anybody wants, uh, also that is there. But I believe now you have got very powerful weapons to fight your competition. We are, if not at par, we are slightly even better than them in certain features that I just showed you. I will be meeting you again uh, next week, I think next Wednesday, and uh, we'll be talking on other aspects of uh, uh, five axis. And uh, I think there are no more further questions. Uh, I thank you very much for joining this uh, webinar, and I'll hope to see you again next Wednesday for another exciting series of five axis webinar. Take care uh, and bye bye.